I've been adjusting my AOCs for about a year. The reason it's taken this long is because they decided to design this screen to not display information clearly. There are five 2% dead zones, there are five 4% dead zones, and they all look the same because instead of putting a decimal point here with a number behind it, they decided to put a percentage symbol here which displays zero information at all. There's also 10 values at each position between each response curve. There are 10 nines, there are 10 tens, there are 10 eights. And instead of putting a decimal point here and displaying positional information behind it, they decided to just make them all look like nine. Even though every position provides a different outer threshold pattern. Your acceleration pattern is different based on the combination of your dead zone and your response curve. There's also issues with the per optic screen. There's a hundredth digit here. And instead of displaying the hundredth digit to give players positional information, they don't display it. All they need to do is add another number here, and they would none, like I would be able to make decisions without having to rely on visual tricks that I had to resort to in order to understand what is happening. I'm currently at three different 1.2s, and all three of these 1.2s feel different. This is middle 1.2, which I'm assuming is 1.25. This is low 1.2, which I'm assuming is 1.20. And these are high 1.2, which I'm assuming is 1.28 or 1.29. There's the same thing is happening with the odd numbers. A high odd number is fully to the right of the default line. A middle odd number has a very tiny amount of orange being split by the default line. There's a little bit of orange here, a lot more orange to the right of it, and a low odd number is being completely split by the default line. There are three values for sure at each per optic value. This is a low odd number. It's being split completely by the default bar. The per optics are dictating how quickly I approach a character. There are two aspects to the aim assist. There's the approaching aim assist as you are getting close to the character. Then there's the on target aim assist, which is roughly the width. It's like a little bubble around the character. Your ADS is dictating how much you can move around in this position. The per optics are dictating how quickly you approach the character in this position. In order to find the strength of your ADS, you should first try to find a speed that allows you to recoil control a flat line or a havoc with no aim assist. I'm going to go up to 155 because it is close to 157, which is the speed that I need to comfortably recoil control weapons at a response curve if I do not have an acceleration pattern. When I am recoil controlling when I am recoil controlling the flat line, I want to be able to not only counteract the recoil of the weapon, I also want to be able to push it in a direction. If I can't comfortably do that, then the strength of my input is too weak and I should increase my ADS number by one and do this until I find a value that allows me to not only recoil control the weapon but also pull it and drag it in a direction. Once I know what that speed is, I then divide that number by random numbers and begin to test <coughs> Test each number at each per optic position. If I'm playing at 8 response curve, I need to be at 45 because 45 ADS is the minimum speed for me to be able to make adjustments with a 4x 3030 in aim assist. In order for me to comfortably be able to make adjustments close to the character like this, I have to be at 45. Otherwise, if I'm at 44, I will get stuck off target when I'm doing stuff like this, no matter what my per optic is. 
because the per optic isn't really dictating how fast I am moving in this position. The ADS is different than the per optic. If I was at 44, I would be struggling to do that. I would get stuck off target closer to the character and it seems like there's a cushion on the edge of the character and it feels really weird as I'm moving around and trying to make adjustments to the character. I'm consistently getting stuck on its shoulder instead of being able to freely move to the target because the strength of my ADS is 44 instead of 45. When you are setting your per optic, there's a value that might be too fast. If I'm playing at 8 response curve, the value that is too fast is middle 3.5. 3.55 is the maximum iron sight speed that I can be at in order to comfortably approach a character with iron sights. If I go to 3.6 or 3.58, I will be pushing too quickly through the aim assist to get to the character and I will consistently overswing the character instead of getting to them and st like stopping once I get on target or stopping close to them. The point of the per optic is to allow you to approach the character and not overswing it. You want to be able to get to the character and not overswing it. Then once you are on target, your ADS number is going to be dictated by whatever is comfortable and making adjustments with a 4x 3030. So that's that's the hidden values. There are five values here. There are ten values here. There are three values at each per optic number and they all feel different. That's how you should find and set your ADS numbers. For the hip fire, currently eight response curve struggles a little bit in the aim assist. It's a little too slow in the aim assist and I feel like I need to speed it up but if I go to 281 my ability to interact with the aim assist becomes too strong. My strength of input becomes too strong and when I am close to a character, I will be over swinging characters consistently. I am trying to find an acceleration pattern that fits my hip fire because the outer threshold pattern is essentially the per optics for the hip fire. At 8 response curve, I don't need a lot of acceleration because the majority of the input, the majority of the slope is tall enough to interact with the aim assist comfortably, but it has a few issues because it's slightly short, like roughly halfway through. I cannot choose my outer threshold pattern, I just have to find an outer threshold pattern that the system allows me to play at. Currently I have been playing at what would be 8.8. .8. It is 0.2 to the left of 9 response curve. When I click in the orange, my outer threshold pattern should be 4, 6, 7, 9 and everything behind is moving. Since I only need minimal acceleration to help my hip fire comfortably interact with the aim assist, I'm going to click in the gray area of the outer threshold to then make certain to make the least amount of blocks move as possible. I click here. I am now at a 2% outer threshold and the 23rd and like 26th or 27th block has moved. Two blocks all the way up here have moved. Another block roughly around here has moved. Something else here has moved. What is most important about it is what the first block that moved is. This is not my ideal acceleration pattern for my hip fire. It still feels a little slow at times, but it's better than no acceleration pattern on my hip fire. I hope that made sense. I, I'm basically done. Like these are the settings for my controller. I need to play at eight response curve to comfortably interact with the aim assist. My controller can only play at eight response curve instead of seven because of how much drift it experiences. In order to find, like, to know if I'm drifting too much, I play caustic. Another guest. I toss Beware. traps down. I've added a variable. Beware! I've added a variable. And then I try to shoot them with a wingman iron sights and see if I can hold it in a position underneath it and safely, comfortably dismantle them without having to struggle and counteract the drift constantly. That's all I do. 
I have set my dead zone to this position because at this position, at 8 response curve, I feel as though when I am making adjustments with any weapon, I am comfortably capable of getting on target because my input is being registered completely. If I was to go to the other 2% that turns into a 4, if I was to go to 0.1 to the left of this, my, imp my dead zone would actually be too low for how tall this response curve is in the front. My input would be getting registered too soon for how twitchy this response curve is. And no matter what I was doing, no matter what my acceleration pattern was, or my strength of input, I would always feel like I'm moving too quickly because my input was being registered too soon. I am at the highest 2 that turns into a 4. I think that's it. I don't, I don't really know how to explain anything else. Like, to, to display and make, like, how to tell if your dead zone's too high, I don't really know how to do that. It's just something you're just going to feel. If your dead zone's too high, you're going to get stuck off target consistently. You're going to struggle on the edge of characters because your input is not going to be registered as you try to make gentle inputs towards characters. I will struggle to make small, subtle adjustments towards characters because my dead zone would be too high and when I made adjustments with it, it would not be moving at the same speed as this. It should always feel like it's moving at the same speed even when you are moving it very gently. Even if it feels like it's speeding up, it should feel like one smooth transition between a, a somewhat slower speed to a faster speed. It should not feel like an extremely slow speed and then a faster speed. It should all feel like when you are doing something, something is happening. I hope that helped anybody else who was trying to make adjustments to make their settings fit their controller.